Hello, my friends. Hello, my brothers and sisters. And I have a very strange word to share with you today. Um, I'm going to talk about the church. You know, God has uh, been really wanting me to say some things about the church. And it is really difficult for me. It's not my nature to undermine other people and their ministries. And I don't like it when people do it, honestly. But sometimes, you know, God likes for you to do something that you don't like to do. I have found this often in my life. The very thing you don't want to do may be the thing that God is calling you to do often. Because that gives you an opportunity to die to the flesh. Amen? And the flesh is not going to agree with God when God tells you to do something. I mean, the flesh is not going to say, oh, that's great, Reverend Juliana. You know what? Just do what God tells you to do and everything's going to be okay. That's not the mentality of the flesh. So what God likes me to do is really just speak to you from my heart in the moment. I have no plans. I have no books. I have no Bible in front of me, no agenda. Amen. Because if we have an agenda, we are in mind control. We are intellectually prepared, but we are not waiting on the Lord. Amen. I know when I do a healing service, I, I deliberately, I have been taught to not, not pray, not, not put myself in the Bible and blah, 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 pray in tongues for three days, you know, to just do nothing, to come out and wait on the Lord. And that's faith. And God can move through faith. Amen. That is what God moves through. And then I remember the first time, I'll give you a little testimony on that. The first time I was going to do a healing meeting, my very first one, I had just gotten healed. Somebody invited me over to do a, 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 a healing meeting. I said, oh my God, you know, I had all my little notes, I had all my little revelations, all my scripture references, and I'm walking out to my car to go. I mean, I am prepared. This is a big deal to me. I'm doing my first meeting, and I want to do it right, of course. I'm prepared. My notes, I'm holding my index cards. I got little index cards, batch of them. And I get into my garage, and, and God says, what are you doing? What are you doing, Juliana? I knew exactly what he meant. I said, well, Lord, I'm going to the, the meeting. That's all he said. Said not one more word. So I took my little you know, agenda, I took my cards, I took my Bible, I put it down, and I went in with nothing. And, you know, there was a miraculous healing that night. Some woman had a big tumor on her hand, and I touched the tumor, and it came off, and she was healed. And that would not have happened. That would not have happened had I had my agenda. Amen. So the important thing is God wants us to speak from our hearts in the moment without agenda and trust him. He'll get us there. Amen. You may have a couple of awkward moments, but you're not in all that prepared and looking at notes and not connecting with people. So we are going to talk about profiteering in the church. So profiteering has an agenda. Profiteering, we could say, has a plan. Profiteering has a financial plan. You know, we could say, how could you say that, Reverend Juliana, profiteering in the church? It's not the mafia, but there are some similarities. So I'm going to point out some of the similarities between the mafia and the church. So profiteering, if someone is profiteering, they're making money off someone else's money. Like if you have a store in Brooklyn... And the mafia comes to you and says, well, Jane, you know, I like this nice, beautiful store. But to be safe here, you have to be under my protection. My protection. Like my umbrella. You're in my territory. And to be safe from outside forces in this, my territory, you're going to have to give me a certain amount of your profits. Maybe it's 10%. Maybe it's 5%. Maybe it's a set amount. I don't know exactly how it works. But I do know you're paying for protection. Amen. And that is called profiteering. It's illegal. Hallelujah. So now in the church, there are men and women that think if they say something and they say it's, it's of God or a 20-minute thus saith the Lord's speech, that really they can call themselves prophets. And they are protecting you 
by giving you a certain word. They are protecting you. They're telling you that you're coming under their prophetic anointing, which is valuable to you. And you, if you go to my church and you're under my prophetic anointing, I, you're under my umbrella and I have the power to protect you if you pay. Not protecting you if you just, you know, walking out of here. Amen. That's profiteering. And that's a profiteering prophet. Well, God is not in that at all, needless to say. And uh, it needs to be exposed. It needs to be dealt with. Because it's, 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 it turns God off and it's turning the world off. It's turning the world off to Christianity. If you noticed, there is a move against Christianity today. And there are certain things that are creating that. It is not the devil that is creating that. Amen? It is what people see, the behavior of other people. So we have to take this to note and divorce ourselves, divorce ourselves as the body of Christ from this behavior, from certain behaviors that are going on in the church. Are you hearing me? If you love Jesus and you want to be a part of a move of God, you have to divorce yourself from the fake move. You can't put old wine in new wine bottles. Amen? And But God, God is always creating a new move. God is the creator. God creates new things every day. Nothing goes on without God choosing to go along with it, to allow it. And right now the world is in a state of flux. America, America, all our cities, all our towns, all our schools, all our churches are in a state of flux. Now, we can go along with that, but it wouldn't be that if it was the will of God. So we have to look at that. You know, I'm saying things, I'm going to be transparent, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm saying things that God has been asking me to say for a very long time, maybe since I first got healed, maybe not as adamantly. Well, you couldn't say it as adamantly then. He was. He wanted me to really just come out and say some things that I have been procrastinating. I'm going to be honest about that. Not I, not the spirit person. I would never hold back on God. But that flesh, I've had to wore a certain amount of my flesh down to be able to just speak what God is telling me to speak. Amen. Because people speak it and they've had a lot of problems. Amen. But you know, I'm at a point in my life where I'm willing to say whatever God tells me to say. And that took what it took and it hasn't been easy. Okay. So that's where I am now. So if uh, the only thing I feel that can attack me with what I do is my flesh. I know that's true and I have been attacked by my own flesh. But what that creates is my having more spirit power. Because when the flesh attacks us, we have an opportunity to bring it under subjection. That's what we're doing here. We're not attending church. We're dying to the flesh. We die daily. We bring the flesh, hallelujah, Jesus, under subjection. And by doing that, we have more spiritual authority, more spiritual power. So for me, in my house, in my life, there is one thing that is more important than anything else. There is one thing that matters. Amen? God matters. My, my relationship, my purpose in God, my gaining spiritual authority, my becoming more of the Spirit and dying to the flesh is everything to me. And there's nothing that I wouldn't do. There's nothing that God can ask me to do that I wouldn't do to, to fulfill that goal. Amen. That's my purpose and that's my heart's desire. So my heart's desire and my purpose are in agreement. There's no money. There's no person I could be romantically involved with better. There's no anything that could really be more important to me than that on this earth. Amen. So that being said, I'm free to say what God wants me to say. Amen. I have no profiteering uh goals. I have no monetary goals. I have no power goals. I don't want to be somebody, blah, 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 all of that. Amen. I want to decrease in my flesh and increase in my spirit. And I know that is the way to go, to do, to be exactly who I am. And that, my friends, is more than enough. Amen.
So that being said, you and your purpose and your power, amen, you cannot get to your empowerment, to your resurrection with God by having idols in your life. That is a one-way ticket to flesh uprising. Amen? A one-way ticket. So you want to look at, you want to scrutinize, where are the idols in my life? And I've noticed this. It can be a very, very sneaky thing, having an idol. Oh, some things are obvious. Some things are obvious. Having a relationship that's abusive, well, it's an obvious idol. Well, it may be hard to get rid of, but you know what? That's an, you can do that. That's an obvious idol. Having an addiction problem, well, that's an obvious idol, isn't it? But I'll tell you what's a sneaky thing is the church. Going to that church two, three times a week and being brought into the subjection of mind control and religion when the very thing that Jesus came here to overcome was religion, the law, religious law, the law of sin and death. Amen. That old nature is full of conditions and behaviors and mind control and generational program from what? Not from the devil. Hallelujah. From the law of sin and death. Old school law that's in the DNA of the mortal man. It's in the DNA of the mortal man and the mortal mind. Your carnal mind, which is enmity against God, has that belief system. I'm talking about a belief system, not devils, a belief system. Hallelujah. When you step out in purpose, you are confronting an old school, old nature belief system. Amen. You are being transformed as you step out in your purpose and faith. Transformed. You are actually in a daily, radical, transformational redemption. That's what you're doing. You were translated at the cross to have the opportunity to be who you are, the righteousness of God in Christ, the spirit being a partaker of the divine nature, all the fruits of the spirit, not the fruits of the flesh. So how do we get there? We confront the belief system that is holding us back. Hallelujah. Deception, illusion, projection, victimization, self-exaltation, self-justification, the mind of the flesh, the mind of Christ, the spirit mind confronts the belief system, the mind, unconscious belief that we can't see. Sometimes you can't even hear them. Sometimes you have weird dreams and you say you have a trauma and then that night you have a weird dream. You say, where'd that come from? That came from that. That's not you. That's the unconscious belief system of the old nature that you are overcoming and bringing under subjection daily. It has emotions. It has a will and an agenda and a mind control all of its own. That's what you're fighting. You do not need to go into a building that is predominantly religion, mind control, condemnation, self-exaltation, and profiteering profits. That's the last thing that you need is to bow to some system, some hierarchy that is making you less, hallelujah, than who you are, your holy identity. Unless they're teaching every time you walk in there who you are. And, and looking at everybody's purpose and gathering together and praying and enforcing the grace of God in individual purposes, you are being programmed with sin consciousness. Hear me? Because you can't grow. Well, how can you say that, Reverend Juliana? How can I say that? Because God every so often takes me through it. Oh, I don't go. I've stopped going into the building because I'm sensitive. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I'm also a writer, and I just wrote a book called Becoming Who You Already Are, Your Holy Identity. And I'm sensitive. I don't want to be influenced. I want to hear from God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you're sensitive. And your heart and your spirit are sensitive beings. Amen. And the flesh can numb you because in there they tell you not to feel your feelings. But I'm going to tell you something. If you don't feel your feelings, you can't separate yourself from the flesh because you're walking around numb. You don't know what's going on. Hallelujah, it's okay to feel, it's great. You know, I feel, I feel anger, I feel rage. When I feel it, I go, oh, mm-hmm. I go in, I feel a little bit more, and I say, okay, 
what you got. Now, once you feel it, you can start dealing with it. You can bring your mind of Christ over the mortal mind, the carnal mind, and start telling it, hey, I know exactly what you're trying to do. Amen. Trying to give me anger, shut me down, keep me from where I want to go, keep me from saying what I want to say, make me less than who I am. Oh, no, I don't know who I am. I know who you are. I bust that con. Hallelujah, Jesus. And you go up. Amen. But if you're numb and you can't feel anything, you're waiting for somebody to protect you from something that doesn't exist, and you're paying, and you're, well, pastor so-and-so, well, I'm going to go Wednesday night and hear him, and I'm going to get brought up, and blah, 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 blah. You are in mind control, religion. You're, you're looking to get something of God from somebody else. Amen? And that, my friends, is idolatry. And that, my friends, is the only thing that could really come against your relationship with God. Amen. Hallelujah. But I guarantee you, we're just going to pray right now about that together. Amen. I just thank you, my Father. I just thank you, Jesus, that my brothers and sisters have been blinded because they love you, because they want more of you, and they've been sincerely going places thinking they're going to get it until they don't see it anymore. They're in the mic. I break the power with the blood of Jesus, with the cross of Christ over every mind control that has influenced my brother's and sister's mind. I break it right now. I break it with the purposes of God in their life. I break it off their hearts. I break it off their minds. I break it off their bodies. All the rage, that religion, all of it that it has created, all the confusion, all the doubt, I command it now to go from their hearts. I tell that flesh, I speak to it, you will bow to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. And my brothers and sisters will be free to leave that building and wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Without condemnation, without ritualisms, with the Spirit, with the Holy Ghost, and Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I love you. This is just the beginning of taking your power back over mind control. Amen.